what are the best things that we can do? So we've got what 60% genetic, which sounds not so good, actually. <laughs> but uh, we do have our 40% we can play with. So what are the key things that we can do to maintain our brain? Yeah, and it, it, it's actually a rosier picture than you might think. So we looked at people that had one or two apoe 4 alleles. That's a really common genetic risk factor that people have for Alzheimer's. And if you're five years younger and you're brain aging, you can mitigate that risk entirely. So even our apoe 4 4 folks that were five years younger were below the average person's risk for Alzheimer's. Um, and that's doable. That's um, about... Uh, one standard deviation from the mean is five years. And so that's the equivalent of getting a B in brain aging. So you just have to be a bit above average. Um, uh, and uh, it's really, I think, achievable for most people. And the big ways to um, reverse or slow down your brain aging, we call them the nine pillars. So there's exercise, diet, sleep, um, staying mentally active, lowering stress, um, uh, so community, so social interactions are really important, general health, mental health, um, and, um, avoiding environmental toxins like microplastics and pesticides. Uh, can we dive into a, a little bit more detail on a couple of those? So, um, so exercise is, yes, is, is great for the brain just because it gets blood flowing and it helps with BDNF. Do you know, anything about the type of exercise you know hit or just zone two or resistance training or yeah so you mentioned bdnf um yeah. that's super important and the higher your heart rate gets the more likely you are to release bdnf from exercise so we really recommend that if you can tolerate it to be in zone three or zone four so hit is great for that but really any exercise people do has an effect. So there's been randomized control trials on every type of exercise and, and doing some exercise is much better than no exercise for any of these um, for preventing Alzheimer's in general. So we would suggest do the exercise that makes you happy and that you're actually going to do. But if you had to pick one, I'd say, you know, really get your heart rate up. So sleep as well. Uh, is not just like the length of sleep. It's also the quality of sleep that matters because uh, it, it cleans out the brain. Um, so, yeah, is there anything that we could track for our sleep that would be a key predictor? Yeah, so I, you know, I'm a big, I have an aura ring. I'm a big fan of aura. So uh, I think the first step to getting better sleep is to track your sleep. So with some sort of wearable device, we know the sweet spot is seven to eight hours um, and to get really high quality deep sleep and good sleep architecture. So Aura Ring actually gives you a, um, a little chart of how much deep sleep you get and how much REM sleep and um, how much light sleep. And so you can see if your sleep architecture is, is ideal. So, you know, I think best, best practices for sleep are uh, avoiding blue light at night, making sure it's quiet, uh, making sure the temperature is cool enough, um, avoiding noises. Um, there's some evidence for magnesium, um, three and eight for sleep as well as melatonin. Um, I found that I personally, uh, have completely fixed my sleep through, um, through actually adding uh, hormone replacement therapy to my life. So I'm 44, I'm perimenopausal, and I started to have bad sleep in my late 30s even. I was waking up at three or four in the morning, you know, four, four times a week, and I thought it was stress-related because I'm a startup founder, and um, that, you know, can obviously make sleep worse. And then I just did started to do some reading and realize that sleep is a big component um, of changes in hormones for women in, mid in midlife and went on um, hormone replacement therapy and it has entirely fixed my sleep. I wake up maybe once a month now at three or four in the morning. So it's been a big game changer. So now I'm trying to tell, sing it from the rooftops, tell all the women that, you know, this could really change your life because having better sleep is really, really important for preventing Alzheimer's. 
but but that is really interesting that uh, hormone replacement therapy has such a big effect on but on on your sleep but also the um your risk for alzheimer's because uh, women in general get more alzheimer's it, it, they have a higher risk yes and i would not be surprised if that was tied back to hormones through sleep in part so I mean, also having symptoms of perimenopause are worse for getting enough exercise, worse for your energy. They sort of make all of the lifestyle um, best practices harder, right? Uh, so it's hard to know exactly at which level that hormone replacement therapy is is helpful for preventing Alzheimer's, but I could see it working on multi different levels um, uh, to help people with, with Alzheimer's prevention. And, you know, as a real disservice that um, the press and the way the original Women's Health Initiative study was interpreted that um, made women and their providers um, scared to, to take hormone replacement therapy for the last 20 years because all of those women have missed out on those benefits because it's really only safe to start hormone replacement therapy within 10 years of menopause. So some somewhere between 40 and 60. And so the women that are now 60 or older, it's probably not safe for them to now start HRT. So um, I think there was a real disservice done by that study. And now we're trying to get in um, the US FDA to remove the black box warning um, from HRT. I think that would what be a really the, good step forward. It would. Is it, so what, what is the problem with uh, women over 60 having starting HRT? Well, that was part of the reanalysis of the original um, Women's Health Initiative data. Mm -hmm. So uh, there were a few problems with that study. One was that a lot of the HRT was started in women over 60. So they had not had hormone replacement therapy for that whole time and, and then were started on it. It also wasn't bioidentical. So it was horse equine, like um, derived hormones. Um, so that also has worse outcomes um, when they looked at um, newer data with, with hormones that were made in a different way that weren't synthetic um, in that way. So um, when they reanalyzed the data, they showed that in the subpopulation of women that were started within 10 years of menopause, there was actually a decrease in cardiovascular disease. There's a decrease in dementia risk, a decrease in um, all of these uh, risk factors that people were looking at. And so now when... Um, now the recommendation has been updated to say that within 10 years, it's actually very safe for women. But if you started after that, the data looks worse. So that was part of the problem with the original analysis. Okay. So is there any training we can do for the brain? So does, so do you think meditation helps? Do you have any evidence for that? Yeah, there's a, there's a few studies, uh, randomized control studies of people looking at meditation and um, brain volume um, and dementia risk. And there is, um, there's small studies, but there's increasing evidence that that's helpful. And stress reduction is certainly helpful for um, preventing dementia in the future, which meditation helps with. So, yes, but we are, we're starting at NeuroAge to run a study using our way of looking at um, the neuro age test for brain aging and um, uh, meditation practice. So we're starting a little study on that ourselves right now. Mm -hmm.